It was like someone wore a pair of woolen socks for a month, took them off, dipped them in toilet water, and then stuffed them right into your mouth. But it had to be like warm toilet water too. Warm toilet water, Oh, Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of digital nomads who have been wandering around the world for over three years, and we make videos about travel and culture. If either of those topics interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time we release a new video. Today we're introducing you to 10 foods we had never seen before going to the UK. This video was chosen by voters on our YouTube community page, so if you want to have a say in future topics that we discuss on this channel, make sure you subscribe. And vote. Are you ready? Yes, let's do this. Marmite. So Marmite is essentially just a really, really salty yeast extract that is spread on toast and butter. So you have bread and butter and then you have Marmite on top. The first and only time I've had Marmite, I had one question burning in my head and that was, why? <laughs> Did it taste good? No. Was it salty? Yeah. It tasted basically like someone had taken butter taken all of the good flavor out of the butter and just heaped on salt, maybe mixed in a little bit of a greasy meat flavor, and then just <laughs> across a piece of bread. We're really starting this video on a high note with a food that we dislike, but we just had to get this out of the way. Marmite to our taste buds was just <laughs> strange. <laughs> very strange. <laughs> now the question is, which came first? Marmite or Vegemite? And is Marmite something that people crave, or is this just a, eh, you know, it's all right sort of food? Let us know down below. Clotted cream. So clotted cream is a very thick, buttery, just delectable dairy cream. It is delicious. The first time I ever had this was in the UK. It was incredible. I loved it. And every time I had scones, sorry. Scones? I've heard in the UK you can pronounce it scones or scones and it's a regional thing, is that right? Please don't bite my head off. In America, we say scones, not trying to be offensive. Your clotted cream is very good, very good. I had always assumed clotted cream was just one of those things you read in books and not really something that people ate anymore. You know, it's just yeah. like something that's You hear about it. Yeah, yeah, not really in existence. Either that or it's some form of like cottage cheese or other cheese curd That's what I was gonna say. Esque yeah. thing. Growing up, when we heard about clotted cream being a thing in the UK, I always assumed it was a cottage cheese consistency. So some sort of cheesy cream with big curds in there. It doesn't actually sound horribly pleasant based off of the name, but it is super good. Mm -hmm. And I ate lots of it before I found out I couldn't eat dairy. Crumpets. So in the States, we always joke about having tea and crumpets, but then when we went to the UK, we were like, oh wow, crumpets are really a thing. Yeah, it was really shocking for me because I had always assumed that crumpets were a kind of cookie, sorry, biscuit. And so when we arrived in the UK and I found out that crumpets are these massive bread things, they're very similar to what we would call an English muffin in the United States. For my American friends, they're just a massive English muffin. So just seeing those in person, was very, oh, they're real, crumpets are real. <laughs> oh yes, when I was, okay, when I was growing up, somebody told me that, mm. okay, in the UK, do you guys have these things called Nilla wafers? They're like little round ah, biscuit things. Yeah. And they're vanilla flavored. And when I was growing up, I was told that the English people call these crumpets. Really? And so I believed ah. that Nilla wafer cookies were crumpets. Question for you, how do you eat a crumpet? Because we just found them in the shop and so the way we ate them was I'd put them in a toaster and then lather them in butter and have them with breakfast. But is there a specific meal time or way to eat crumpets? Let us know down in the comments. Pork pie. From what we understand, pork pies are basically a bunch of chopped up pork wrapped in a thick, Layer. greasy pork jelly stuffed inside of a pastry shell and then baked. And sometimes this pastry shell is in the shape of a loaf, like it's baked mm -hmm. in a loaf pan and other times it's round like an actual- Like a pie. Like a pie. Our honest reaction to pork pie was that it was pretty disgusting. And <laughs> I know that sounds really harsh. We're not trying to be culturally insensitive, but just, you know, 
taste, you're used to the taste you grew up with, and it does take a little bit to adjust to the food of a new culture. A couple of things that made pork pie really different for us were one, it served cold. At least all the times that we had it, it was cold. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Which in America, you don't really ever eat cold meat. Only a few very like rare dishes. Meats. Yeah. yeah. But if you're gonna have a pie, it's always hot. So that was a bit odd to begin with. And then another thing was the pork jelly. So these pork pies have this thick layer of fat around them. And so every bite you take is there's a bit of meat, a bit of crust, and then just a bunch of fat. Americans don't really like their animal fat. They really, if you have a piece of steak, you're cutting off the fat and you're not eating that part. They use skim the fat off of soups. You don't eat that. So that is a big uh, hurdle for us to overcome when it comes to eating food in the UK is that there is a lot of animal fat. And so just the way we grew up was not eating animal fat. Pork pies are full of this thick animal fat. And so that was a shocking thing for us to mm -hmm. experience. We've had the same reaction when visiting Asia and we've tried foods there that had that really fatty texture to them. Like mm -hmm. eel, we had eel in Japan yeah. and it had that really fatty texture to it and we both just, mm, it's a yeah. no-go at that rate. If it's like, it feels like you're eating your tongue. It's really oh, that's nasty. Awful. That's awful. Yeah. But we're not judging you guys. We're not saying it's bad food. We're just saying that the taste that we grew up with, it's a different set of tastes. Yeah. And we are very brave eaters and we are happy to try new things. And also, if there's a food, a cultural food that we dislike, we tend to try it again and again and again and eventually acquire a taste for it. Like we did that with a lot of food in Korea mm -hmm. and Japan. And so we are very happy to continue eating pork pie in the UK. Yes. I, I won't be avoiding it in the future just because it's an odd dish for me, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I feel like we could really easily acquire a taste for it as well because mm -hmm. it's savory. It has a good flavor. Very hearty. You know? yeah, yeah, it is. Haggis. This is a Scottish food that is made out of sheep's heart, liver, and lung, and is cooked in a sheep's stomach. Or at least, to the best of my knowledge, this is what a haggis is. And it also has a lot of spices and I think oats and other mm. things like that all mixed in. Now, in contrast to pork pie, you would assume haggis to be a food that Americans ugh, dislike because, you know, it's got all those organs in it. And Americans are famous for being picky when it comes to organ meat. But I actually freaking loved haggis. It was so good. <laughs> I had multiple helpings over multiple days. And a huge shout out to our friends Connie and Jeff, who you can see in this video here, who actually brought a haggis from the UK to France for <laughs> us to eat with them. It was really good. For my American friends, haggis tastes a lot like American biscuits and gravy. So good, so good. So like a ground beef sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Get it ground beefy and it's got that gravy flavor. Mm -hmm. um, we had haggis, I think with mashed potatoes, didn't we? Neeps and tatties. Oh, neeps and tatties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pasties. So a pasty is a baked pastry that is stuffed with meat and vegetables. And yes, it is as delicious as it sounds. For my American friends, it looks like a calzone, but it's better. When we first visited the UK, we did not know how to pronounce this food. We didn't know whether it was pasty or pasty. And thankfully, our good friend Sean was able to set us straight and tell us that it was a pasty before we made too big of fools out of ourselves. And from what we've heard from our friends in the UK, the origin story behind pasties is that they come from the city of Cornwall. And way back in the day, there were these miners working under the ground and they were working with some toxic material. I don't remember which one it was. And so they had a problem, which was every time it came time to eat lunch, they would touch the food, the toxins would get from their hands to the food, they would eat the food and poison themselves. So in an effort to keep from poisoning themselves, pasties were invented, and that's why they have the crimped edge, is because the miners would hold that crimped edge while they eat, and then the toxins would only get on the crimped edge, and then they'd finish and throw the crimped edge away. But that's the best part. I wanna learn how to make them. Mm -hmm. If you have any good pasty recipes, drop them in the comments below. Also, let us know if the origin story that we've heard behind pasties is fact or fiction. Mushy peas! Mushy peas? Mushy peas? Mushy? 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 mushy. mushy. I think it's mushy. We go with mushy? 
Mushy. I think, mush. I think it's mushy. Mushy. It's so confusing. People are gonna be like, they're saying the same thing! <laughs> <laughs> they're oh. saying the same thing! I think, well in the States, we pronounce it mushy. So I'm assuming it's mushy. Is yes. the UK word. I also think that it's mushy. Mushy. So, <laughs> besides that small linguistic difference, there was another thing to be said about mushy peas. The first time we encountered it was in London. We were at this pub. I ordered fish and chips and it came with the side of the mushy peas. And at first glance, I thought, is that wasabi? <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, it was very confusing. And then I decided I'd take a bite and see, and I lifted it up with a spoon, and okay, those are peas. I see they're just smashed peas, basically. And then I ate it, and then that's when my mind really exploded. But what is this? Yeah. Taste buds are so confused, because the confused. flavor is not really something it's not really a flavor combination that you would ever imagine. Yeah. What mushy peas are is peas smashed and infused with mint and sugar? Yes. Because there's, there's a bit of sweetness to it yeah, as well. Yeah, so it's kind of like a sweet side that goes with savory things, but it's peas and mint. Yeah, which is not a combination you would see in the States, mm. so. I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised though, because it's not a bad combination. To practice my <clears throat> subdued British compliments, it wasn't bad. Digestives! Now, unlike the name suggests, I don't think that this is actually for digestion purposes, is mm -hmm. it? Why are digestives called digestives? Because the name does not match the wonderful beauty which is the cookie. Biscuit. Biscuit, yeah. Biscuit. Get it right, man. <laughs> I had never heard of digestives before going to the Me UK. Me neither. Had you? No. Yeah. So it was a pleasant surprise. The folks we were staying with had a pack of digestives in the cupboard. And for a few days, I avoided it because it just, you know, it doesn't... The word digestives makes you think of some healthy organic cracker, which is... Laxative. Of... Yeah. It's full of like <laughs> flax or something. That's it's supposed to bring thinking. on the bowel movement. I was thinking it was a flax biscuit, basically. But then eventually uh, we, we pulled them out, served them up, and they were delicious. And after that, for the rest of our time staying in the UK, we didn't stay anywhere longer than a day or two and not get a package of digestives and yeah. put them in the cupboard. Yeah. They're so good, you know, dipping them in tea or dipping them in coffee. I hope that's what you're supposed to do. That's that's what we did. Stinking Bishop. Now, this is a type of cheese that is washed in fermented pear juice. And like the name suggests, it is extremely smelly. It makes all of the lists. If you Google stinkiest cheeses on earth, this is on all of the lists. And yeah. yes, we actually had some. This was at a cheese shop in Bath. We stayed there for five days. Not the cheese shop, but the city. And <laughs> Basically the cheese shop though. We went there yeah. like every day. We went to the cheese shop every single day and would buy 200 grams of cheese and then go eat them for dinner. And then sample a whole bunch. And it was really fun. The shopkeeper was a blast and would have us, you know, make great conversation, let us try different things. And so that day we were like, okay, we've been pretty brave so far, trying some pretty crazy cheeses. What is the stinkiest cheese in this shop? And he said, have you seen Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit? And we said, yes. And he said, well, this cheese has a cameo in Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. And following that movie's release, the sale of Stinking Bishop went up by about 500%. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so we tried it. And my gosh, it was literally the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. The, what, the way I've described it in the past is, it was like someone wore a pair of woolen socks for a month, took them off, dipped them in toilet water, and then stuffed them right into your mouth. But it had to be like warm toilet water too. Warm toilet water, ugh. It was just so nasty. Bad. And in the movie, if you have not seen The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, in the movie, this cheese is used to, I believe, bring Wallace back from a state of unconsciousness. He's either yeah, unconscious- they, they waft the cheese. <laughs> yes, and they make him waft the cheese while he's unconscious, and then he wakes up because the mm. smell is that powerful. And it is. It would, the smell would not wash off our hands for several days. Just a realistic question for you guys. 
Is Stinking Bishop the type of cheese that you actually eat for pleasure? Like, is there a scenario in which you're having a dinner party and you take out the Stinking Bishop and everyone's like, hmm, this is such great cheese, or is it more of just like a novelty thing? Like, yeah. this was in Wallace and Gromit, oh, it's so funny, I'll give it to my nan for Christmas, that's a joke. Toad in a hole. When we were in the UK, we went over to some friend's house, actually Connie and Jeff, who we mentioned earlier, and we had this great conversation all about foods which we love. And one of the topics that came up was toad in a hole. And toad in a hole, I think Jeff mentioned it offhandedly, you know, toad in a hole is a great dish. And we were like, yeah, it's not bad. You know, it's all right. And then we continued talking about Toad in a Hole and then realized, <laughs> I don't remember how exactly we realized, but that we were talking about different things. Because in America, Toad in a Hole looks like this, while in the UK, Toad in a Hole looks like this. If I'm being perfectly honest, I think the American Toad in a Hole makes a little bit more sense. In like, it actually looks it, like in something picture. in a hole. Yeah, it's something in a hole, whereas yeah. like the UK version doesn't quite look like a toad in a hole. Although, to be fair, it does look better, more tasty, to me. Yeah, then the American one is just toast with egg, mm -hmm. so it's a bit boring. Yeah, it is a bit boring. Some mom is like, how can I make this breakfast different than yesterday? I know, I'll <laughs> chop a hole in the piece of bread and throw an egg in there. British toad in a hole is sausages that are baked into Yorkshire pudding. In America, we eat toad in a hole for breakfast. In the UK, is it the same way? Is toad in a hole a breakfast dish or is it a lunch dish? And is it for certain holidays? Now that's what I'm wondering because it does look like kind of a festive dish. And now we're gonna turn the conversation over to you. If you've been a tourist in the UK, what was a food that surprised you? And if you are British, what is a food that you would recommend we try on our next visit to the UK? Drop it in the comments below. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And we have a goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers on this channel by the time our period of isolation here in France ends. So if you wanna help us reach that goal, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button to help the YouTube algorithm promote this video around the internet. We will see you guys next time. Bisous.